Okay, there's a few more that are that are just joining. I think as that they're coming through in a second, um, but we'll, uh, we'll we'll kick off. So, uh, morning to everyone. Thank you for for joining us uh, for this breakfast session. Um, some of you I, I know have already been on some of our previous sessions, and what we try to do really with these um, these sessions, which we run to be fair every kind of uh, you know six to eight weeks or so, um, is fundamentally. Um, uh, talk and support uh, the housing and in some cases local government sector um, break down both business challenges and opportunities as well as technology ones as well. Um, so just check in. Um, I've just seen a comment come through that there's a bit of an echo. Can everyone hear me okay or is it a bit better now Sue? I think the echo's gone now my side so perfect. Okay um, so just because it's half eight um, to make sure everyone's awake. It's just um, uh, it's myself and Ollie this morning. We're joined by Kira as well um, from from the Crimson side. Um, just a bit of fun to sort of get us going. Um, I'll ask um, I'll ask if you could um, for the next uh, two minutes respond uh, via chat. Um, just because I imagine if I ask everyone to turn off mute and then. Uh, <laughs> and then shout at me it's going to get like a, a teams version of the house of commons um so just a bit of an activity to get us started um uh, and just i suppose make sure you're awake uh today is really about inter integrating contact data and how to create you know we talk a lot about in the sector the desire to create a single view of the customer and have a consolidated view um, of the tenant citizen or customer in our case um and, and Ollie's going to uh, has got some sort of fantastic content to walk you through both in real form of some of the technology and uh, technology sets that Microsoft can offer um, aligned to uh, aligned to that message. Um, and really, you know, it's about giving you guys today a little bit of an understanding of what technology capabilities are out there to help you join those uh, disparate data dots. Um, and also, I suppose, give you some food for thought as to, you know, I think there's a there's a lot of views of where would you start? Um, uh, or, or confusion, perhaps seeing it as a mammoth task and how potentially you might go about breaking that down. Um, so just before then we get in, just a bit of fun. Um, Ollie, if you like to um, move the slide on. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. Um, so um, on mute, please. Um, but if you could just um, message the chat, um, just it's a bit of a guess the picture. So hammer away guys in the chat as to what you think this is. I think this is the closest I'll ever get to being a TV host. <laughs> this first one's quite hard because it really is just one whole colour. Any views, guys? Any views? <laughs> Mr. Blobby, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Some good guesses. Dog's tongue. Like it. Okay, right. So first one, because there's just a couple of the earth, uh, three of these. Um, Ollie, next slide. It of, of course, obviously, <laughs> was a inflatable pink flamingo. Uh, next one. Let's see if you can guess the next one. I think this is a bit easier. Not much. Noodles, noodles. We're a fan of noodles. <laughs> Moss. OK, fantastic. So next slide. It was, in fact, a tennis ball, a bit of a battered one, to be fair. So it was a little bit unfair with that one. Um, and last one. Rice cake. Helen's been on the health kick. <laughs> it's 
is great. I don't think we've had so much chat activity ever. <laughs> um, so uh, it, of course, was drum roll, please. Um, pasta, of course, it was. It was a large picture of a load of dry pasta. Um, so that's it for the picture round. Um, metaphorically speaking, just a bit of fun to get us going, really. Um, but I think the key message here is what we've seen actually is an underlying challenge. The big reason as to why, you know, you as housing associations, when we speak to to, to like minded housing associations and councils, um, creating um, this single view of the customer is, is really about empowering the individuals um, and your colleagues and peers that work alongside. Um, and if you've only got that one segregated single view um, and, and certain part of understanding of what's going on and not the bigger picture, you know, it can be very hard um, to, to get on, you know, and give, give it give it your best in your role, whether you're in the contact center, um, whether you're in the neighborhoods team. Um, so having that bigger picture and having that collective set of information um, is, is so important. You know, and once you've got that bigger picture, what you can then do with that information and data um, uh, and move forward with that um, is far is far more powerful and far more effective. So um, thank you for bearing with us. It's just a bit of fun, but metaphorically speaking, um, very much about, you know, a bigger picture and, and having the complete picture to be able to understand where you navigate next. Um, so just on to then some of the more formality stuff um, and just to most of you guys who are on the call um, understand and probably know a little bit about us. Um, but for those of you that are new to Crimson, um, just very, very quickly, we are a Microsoft Gold partner and, and effectively help a number of sectors. Um, so higher education, local government, housing and UK home builders really realize the opportunity with the Microsoft technology. And we have technology practices through Azure, Dynamics 365, Modern Workplace with SharePoint and Power Apps, as well as a data practice um, and Power BI, um, a Power BI consultancy as well. So an array of, of, of Microsoft uh, capabilities um, and, and, and skill sets and practices um, with, you know, some common goals in mind that actually what we're really here to do is support um, the sectors that we work with, i.e. yourselves in housing and local government to drive better journeys with your customers and improved processes and efficiencies with your colleagues and peers on the ground. So just before uh, just before we get into it, uh, next slide. Yep. Um, just to summarize how we differentiate, certainly for the housing and um, local government sector is, uh, you know, it's not just the experience of some of the clients of some yourselves who we work with. Um, you know, we work with, we're lucky enough to work with a number of housing associations and local governments from platform housing to Bromley Council to Accent Housing um, and, and many more. Um, what we've created within our, uh, what we call our technology kit bag, as well as being able to bring experience to the table with the sector um, is a set of uh, predefined accelerators across our Microsoft stack. You know, we primarily have a number of those that are embedded within uh, what we call Dynamics 365 that are focused and centered on um, effectively housing processes. But as a technology partner, we have, you know, what we would describe as pro forma templates and solutions across Dynamics 365, Power Apps um, and SharePoint for EDRMS requirements as well. So, um, you know, as well as that insight and understanding and being able to bridge that gap of business problem and challenge and opportunity and outcome, we also have uh, a number of, number of the pro forma um, accelerators across that Microsoft skill set, which um, is effectively a model where, you know, we don't productize it. Um, it's not hard coded or developed, but essentially we, we are able to drop that into environments, um, whether it's Dynamics 365 or your Power Apps environment, set that up and give you those assets as a starting point. And that's me really, guys. Uh, I think the, the majority uh, the majority of you will know who we are already, but if you didn't, um, it's uh, it's a quick refresher. Um, and now that's it from me, really. Uh, we've got Ollie to sort of walk you through some fantastic demonstrations and uh, data concepts. So um, over to you, Ollie. 
Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Jordan. Uh, yeah. Mo morning, guys. Uh, I'm I'm Ollie Sinclair. Um, I, I'm a principal consultant uh, for the for the cloud practice. Um, and what I really want to take you through today, I've got a bit of a mini agenda. Um, really just uh, just a bit of narrative just around uh, sort of the housing systems and the state of play that um, that, that some organizations sort of find themselves in in terms of uh, the, the data structure and uh, and some of the pitfalls that that, that happens with that um, some legacy uh, and obviously just martial data that, that that can be a bit tricky um, I will very briefly just so that everybody is sort of aware of the technology stack that the, the demonstrations are going to be on I'm going to do a bit of an introduction to the power platform uh, and obviously um, based on what Jordan is saying you know we, we, we have a uh, an accelerator which um, I'm kind of basing a lot of my demonstration on um, and sort of extending that ex uh, accelerator into certain scenarios um, what I would say is that these are um, sort of uh, cherry-picked scenarios there are a plethora of things that I guess I could have uh, showed you um, so it's no 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 way by means just these are the things that you can do this is a very much a, a flavor uh, of some of the the elements that, that that the technology will provide you in terms of sort of connecting data uh, and being able to do things with that so it's really then talking about the 360 365 view, you know, 360 view, not 365. There you go. Too too much of the product. Um, uh, talking about 360 view, um, and really just discussing around um, sort of the things that we've seen when we've been uh, implementing um, sort of enterprise level uh, rollouts of uh, the Power Platform and Dynamics 365, uh, and some really some suggestions on potentially where to start uh, and understanding around the complexities of, of business processes as well as data. Um, I'm then going to have uh, I'm going to go deep dive into uh, three scenarios, um, one around virtual entities, um, one around Power Automate, um, and the final one around um, RPA, so Robotic Process Automation, um, which is kind of a, the, the newest uh, element to uh, Microsoft's uh, Power Platform technology stack. Um, so that's really the agenda for today. Uh, first, starting off uh, with something uh, I sort of found the other day. Uh, just a bit of a funny graphic, but it actually is quite sort of tells the story. It's quite pertinent to uh, to this conversation. Um, you know, a guy sitting there. I've logged in. Uh, I've logged a repair on your website, but had no contact. Uh, and then it's you know, it could be with the contact center or the housing officer or the scheduling team or the repairs team or the specialist contractor. But I can't access their system, so there's no way to tell. And it's sort of, you know, the, the age old question that, that you get from customers, uh, aren't you all part of the same team? He said, no, I'm, I'm only in charge of excellent customer service. It's, uh, um, it's ironic, but, but um, unfortunately, it, it, it can be quite true in some situations. So um, this is the type of thing we're trying to avoid. But um, I stumbled across that the other day and I thought that was quite, that was quite funny to, to show. Um, so really, uh, housing legacy systems. Um, there are a number of um, you know scenarios where we've seen uh, legacy systems and uh, a number of data sources in, in all sorts of areas. Now you know before um, the the real launch of low code no code um, platforms and frameworks, um, potentially it was uh, housing associations and local authorities choosing best of breed technology um, to deliver certain elements of, of their business process or, or, or department functionality. And that's great in the short term. Um, the only problem with that is uh, integration of data and finding that you're doing a lot of ETL uh, on those desperate data sources to find a sort of a golden record, a, a, a single source of truth, all of these buzzwords that, that people uh, people explain um, and uh, it, it is very very tricky um, to be actually to, to, to find a situation where you could we can actually truly get that um, and then be able to share that with the whole organization um, you know everything from uh, security access rights um, data protection um, ISO segregation of duties all of this stuff plays a part um, in in where we find ourselves in usually in these in these scenarios um, and it's you know it's no fault of, of one single idea or, or or effort it is really just a combination of um, you know best of breed and you know trying to find the best way quickly um, to to resolve a, a, a pain point in the business um, so when we go on to um, you know to, to, to start implementing a um, 
an enterprise implementation of of, of housing association uh, solution system platform. Um, we this is a, a really good example uh, of one of our um, enterprise level ones where um, this is really just showing um, the uh, the processes that are actually based on a tenancy status. So you can see you've got some things on pre tenancy tenancy change. Um, the actually when they are a customer or a tenant and then late stage customers or tenants um, and then and then post customers. Now, as you can see, it, it just shows you a real quick picture of how intricate and related and dependent all of these processes are. So you can imagine the data that's being held with all of these processes um, is going to be really dependent on each other. So, you know, the, the first questions that we that we try and, and, and break down is wh where would we be able to start with this? How can we start with this if everything is so dependent? Um, how can we break these uh, these elements down and start going forward? Because this is such a complex process that uh, involves many people, many departments. Um, you know, who's going to go first? Is there a is there a strategy? Um, and and what do we do? with the people and the processes that are potentially left behind when we're breaking this down into manageable chunks and deploying this. So, so what is the approach to, 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 to deal with that? Um, and you know, th there's no single answer um, out there that, 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 that sort of explains uh, the utopian way of implementing uh, a new platform uh, and sort of taking over legacy systems and legacy data. Um, but what we try and do is we try and normalize their processes um, and try and to incorporate that on a sort of a division, the objective of 2B, you know, what is it that you guys are doing? How can we marshal these into maybe functional apps? It could be departments apps and making relationships with um, the standard way that the Power Platform and Microsoft Dynamics is, is structured and set up. Now that's great, that's brilliant. You know, um, we can go on there, we can we can sell the vision uh, and we can, you know, we can give them the utopian 2B um, perfect solution, uh, but in reality, to get to this takes a lot of work, takes a lot of pain, and there are incremental stages that will need to be done to actually get there. So the problem we always have is, okay, you know, the one of the first elements that we really want to get to is a single single source of truth um, with our data, um, but the functionality of specific elements um, will have to wait until you know we've got enough time and we've got a, a solid foundation into this new platform or this new new solution, um, and, and that's that's really how we, we we then try and use the Power Platform to its best abilities. Now, for to give you guys a very quick overview of the Power Platform, um, for for those that sort of aren't aware, uh, it is Microsoft um, low code offering. Um, and there are some four main pillars to this. There is Power BI, which is very much your, your, your business analysis. It's your reporting side. Um, it gives you that visualization understanding um, of your data. Now, Power BI can be a very useful tool uh, in terms of being able to source um, uh, data from, from other areas purely from a, a metric standpoint and a reporting standpoint. So um, you can use elements of Power BI to be able to connect this information together. Power Apps, that's the that's that's the the, the main element of the Power Platform. Um, this is the the sort of the data collection and presentation side of the Power Platform. Um, it's again low code, no code, and there are many flavors of of Power Apps. Um, and ultimately, in three types, you've got Canvas Apps, model model driven apps, and uh, and, and actually portals. So you can have a customer facing app um, to be able to, to to share with those guys um, but that really is the the, the core um, application that Microsoft Dynamics 365 is, is actually built on so Dynamics 365 is a set of modules that are theoretically power apps um, they are a combination of power apps for the data collection and displaying um, and the, the the third one in in this pillar is power automate so power automate is your workflow engine it's your um, it's your processor um, it, it it moves change calculates and, uh, and manipulates data um, to, to fit your business processes and again very low code um, uh, in terms of being able to set up and configure those processes um, specifically for your businesses. And then the fourth one, just on the side there, Power Virtual Agents. Um, uh, again, the new, the newest member to the the, the Power Platform in terms of the the core pillar. Um, it, it is a, a brilliant uh, sort of uh, extra 
uh, tool to be able to not only use um, the, the, the data, um, but to be able to actually automate that and use um, uh, artificial intelligence and, um, and machine learning to be able to uh, to present um, your, your information and to be able to communicate with your customers or internal uh, employees um, uh, through, through, through virtual agents, which is absolutely fantastic. But underlying those four pillars um, is the common data service, data connections, and AI builders. I'll tackle AI builders first. It's very quick. Um, AI builders is is your your way to actually going into uh, Azure cognitive services. Um, there's some really really smart stuff in that space where um, you will be able to within your Power Automate or within your Power App um, to be able to execute um, AI builder from anything from understanding and reading um, OCR texts of invoices and consuming that uh, that transforming that data and then pushing it into an app into your data dataverse um, and then there's data connectors data connectors are absolutely fantastic and i'll be touching on um, the data connectors um, in some of these demonstrations um, it is a way and i think there's over 500 now uh, connectors of uh, connecting different data sources um, to this power platform um, so not only do you have the common data service, which is the final element to, the, to really the power platform that we talk about, um, the common data service is effectively your, your database, um, and uh, it, it really is the the sort of the, the the driver of the Dynamics 365 applications. But 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 not all applications need the common data service. They can just live uh, within a set of connectors and connect to all sorts of data sources. So that gives you just a very quick overview of uh, of the Power Platform. Um, really. We're, when we when we sort of have a look at the Power Platform and we look about master data management, um, I usually get this side slide up and try and explain it very very quickly. Um, so in here, rather than sort of a linear understanding of 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 data and how data works, um, it, it is better to represent it as a cyclical nature. At the top, we have the data collection elements. So the ones I've sort of talked to you about. Um, previously in the in the last slide around power apps around how we can collect data um, from power, virtual agents from communicating with your customers and then obviously power automate will be able to collect information when you have data being collected um, it, it effectively can go into the dataverse or it can be um, through data uh, through, through data sources so dataverse technically is a data source so you could probably put that in there but for this example we're you know we're, we're pushing the data first on this platform so we stick this in the middle because it does relate to all of these other things um, data sources are you know you can have unstructured and structured data sources um, and effectively that collection will push and pull into um, a set of data sources you would like um, ingestion is really again uh, moving on from data sources how you can um, consume unstructured data and ingest that in a way if you're thinking about um, IOT and all of the, the, the information the data that comes from um, uh, IOT devices um, you're really going to look at something like data factories to actually then consume that information in a in a sensible way to be able to surface that to the dataverse and then be able to, to push on to other areas. Um, there is storage um, that, that comes in. Obviously, Dataverse, again, can sit in storage because it is effectively a database. Um, but there are a number of options in which you would store um, uh, historical data, your transactional data. This, the, this area sort of it comes from the ingestion and, and, and can be pushed into, into actual storage. So once we've got collected the data, we understand our sources. We've done some ingestion and, and, and we've actually stored our data. The, the the next two areas are really what what adds the value. Um, it's around the analysis. It's the customer insights. It's it's building a picture uh, and 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 understanding that data from an analytical standpoint. And again, using cognitive services and stream analytics, you're then trying to then try to visualize some of this data that you have in the system. And again, all of this can be, um, you know, the sticky glue in the middle is that dataverse, that common data service that, that can actually be used um, to, to, to sort of uh, to, to, to surface this uh, and, and consume it with, with other areas. So I think it's just really important to give you guys an understanding of when we talk about um, the master data management and the power platform, this is the power and these are all the tools that are available to, for, for integration and for, for connecting stuff together. So I've jabbered on about 
quite a lot already now. Um, so I think it's really keen for me to give you some real life examples of how some of these elements can work. Um, so the first one is um, the understanding of a virtual entity. Um, so within a this scenario, um, we're actually Crimson has rolled out the contact center. So they've rolled out the power platform um, and we've rolled out our accelerator on top of that for contact management. So they have um, person con contact data, they've got tenancy data, they've got location data, but it's very simplistic and, and, and there are uh, a number of other elements that, that, that aren't actually on the common data service yet or in Dataverse in the platform. So the contact center do continuously receive calls regarding payments and charges. So, you know, it's anybody from ringing up saying, OK, you know, I, I you know, I want to make a payment or um, I, I've made a payment and, and I can't see this, you know, has this gone in yet? Um, you know, where are where are, am I with my balance? Um, these sort of information, uh, these sort of requests come from from customers. Um, now, the implementation of the finance system um, it is for future phases. So unfortunately, as the contact center agent, I won't have access to the financial transactions that sit within um, the, the ERP system or, or, or the old system. Now, what we can do to leverage this is what's known as a virtual entity. Now, there are some some elements uh, and some prerequisites that you would need, um, but effectively you can have what's known as a data provider providing a snapshot of information that can live directly on the common data service. So virtual entities, they're made up of data provider, a data source record, and, and the actual virtual entity. So as a contact center agent, I can actually jump on to Dynamics and look as records and look at tran financial transactions, they aren't actually sat in the common data service. They are consumed within um, an, an API, whether it be open data or a Cosmos DB, or you can actually build your own custom ones. So what I'm going to show you today is just very quickly um, the sort of the components of how we've create, created a virtual entity within um, the, uh, the Power Platform with our accelerator and showing you that it really is just it, from, from the, an end user perspective, it looks like it's data within the system, but it's not. So let me jump into uh, Dynamics 365 now. So you guys can, can you guys still see the screen? We good? So um, for you, for the guys that haven't seen um, Dynamics 365 before, uh, this is sort of how it looks. And we've got some information around um, sort of this is a dashboard around uh, open cases um, and some of the metrics which uh, just pulling off uh, data within the system. If I was looking for, um, for example, if Ted rang up, I would go and have a look and see if I could find um, Ted. And it was uh, there's a, a global search which pulls back some information. I'm looking for Ted Nugent, who's on the phone um, and I can go and click on Ted and very quickly be presented with um, a view of, um, of Ted's um, core information. So as you can see there, you've got the content information, you've got some things around personal alerts, um, you've got some personal information, you've got links to tenancy, um, some cases, some ASB incidents that they've, they've, um, they've been involved with. So already we have some information um, that, that was already been a part of the contact management um, uh, data. Um, but what we don't have is, um, is extra tenancy information around this specific transaction that Ted has been doing. So the way to do that, um, what I've done behind the scenes is um, I've mocked up an API, uh, which is no data API to actually show some transaction data. So behind the scenes, um, there is a surface, there's an SVC service that shows a load of data that I'm going to try and consume uh, within Dynamics 365. So the first thing that needs to happen is to create um, the OData um, data source. So I'd, I'd select my URL um, and actually provide a couple of queries around UPRNs and tenancy IDs to get the right information. And with this record and just linking the um, the, the, the right uh, OData API, I can actually consume a load of tenancy records. Now, what does that look like in practice? Well, if I go back to Ted and go to his uh, tenancy record, 
which is linked to him. You'll see some more information about the tenancy, um, which is great. There's the location. Um, there's a bit of a process where we know he's, it's an active tenancy. Um, and we want to have a look at some financial details around uh, around this tenancy. Now, out of the box, um, you know, the contact centre has um, some agreement information, you know, what deposit has been paid, a view of the charges, but no real understanding of the transactions. Well, what we've done here now is this uh, this subgrid shows all of the individual um, tenancy transactions that's come through from that data service. Um, now that's that's absolutely fantastic. We can go ahead and interrogate that information and say, you know, Ted, um, yeah, I, you know, I'm just double checking that I paid my court costs um, uh, a couple of months ago, um, just making sure that I'm not going to get fined again or whatever it may be. And an agent can come in here, and even though this information is not on the data, uh, not in the database, because it's consumed through a virtual entity, um, you can actually see the information on here. Um, and that housing transaction ID are the IDs that you um, that you would have got through your um, through your API. So again, being able to surface data from different data sources directly within Dynamics means that you, you as a contact center agent, I can find different things that relate to TED, um, even though it's not currently in the system. So this is really useful because um, in terms of uh, storage uh, within the common data service and, 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 and Dataverse, you want to keep that as clean as possible and you don't want to um, sort of muddy up your, uh, your your contact information or your, your, um, your environment with a load of transaction that really should be sat in an ERP system, a finance system. But what you want to do is be able to surface that so people can understand the intricate details if they need to. Um, so that that's the first real example. And obviously, knowing that there's 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 tenancy transactions um, and the fact that it, it is represented in the system, then you know you can do anything that you, you'd expect. Um, you can have a look at the transactions and you can and you can do some metrics on those information. It will summate the information just like standard records within the system, um, but just knowing that it uh, it isn't. The one downside to virtual entities, though, is that um, uh, if you're just consuming an API, um, you, it really is read only um, uh, information. Now, Microsoft has announced uh, very recently that they have um, uh, create, update, read and, and delete um, it, capabilities of the of the of virtual entities um, but that would take probably a lot more coding um, to be able to do that but again if you're starting with um, virtual entities and starting to consume this information at appropriate times with the appropriate type of data you can then extend that if say for example the ERP system that you're you're integrating with is going to be long term then there's potentially there are there might be some types of records that you would want to to to, to expose a little bit more functionality and be able to actually within dynamics um, go ahead and look at these records and actually be able to go ahead and update them and they would update in the related system so um, again you know bringing that functionality to you guys uh, is is really good so that's one of the first elements. Uh, it's relatively straightforward to show, um, but it but it, it it sort of serves a purpose that even if you are at the right at the beginning of implementing um, a, a a platform and you just got your contact center in there, there are ways in which you can surface information that doesn't currently sit in the platform um, quite easily. Okay, so um, what's what's the next scenario? Um, so the next scenario really is um, the Power Automate demo. Now, um, Power Automate is a massively powerful tool and does lots and lots of different things. And this scenario is a good example of how um, it's used really as an integration engine. So scenario two is that Crimson has rolled out um, um, the, the the platform for housing officers too, um, and uh, and they're, they're using that for, for core contact management. Um, unfortunately, that, that the housing officer um, manager needs to see all appointments uh, for the team in one place, including rent support visits. So if people going outside doing um, rent support. Unfortunately, the, the, the replacement of the rent support booking system is for future phases. So again, we're getting this limbo where um, we need to have that single source of through to the customer, um, you know, knowing, you know, when 
people are going to be visiting our, our customers, our tenants, um, and and sort of uh, and having a full view of that. But unfortunately, some of those appointments are in in the new system, and some of those appointments are in a legacy booking system or a different booking system. It may not have to be be legacy. So one of the situations we get ourselves into: how can we um, very quickly integrate with a external system and be able to combine information um, about the same the same uh, the same type of data so with the first scenario it was transactions that's all coming from a, an ERP system in this scenario we have appointments but in two areas we've got appointments in the common data service and in, in our power platform and we've got appointments in a legacy system so how do we have a look at sort of merging and understanding um, a full view of, of the same type of data and that's really where power automate um, it, it really comes in to its own now um, the scenario I'm going to run through is when a booking is created on on a, on this booking site, um, what it's going to do is going to trigger an automated process through a custom connector um, and retrieve booking details, find the customer, find the user and the, the relevant service calendar, um, and then create the appointment within Dynamics 365 with the details that we've retrieved from this custom connector so that when we present a calendar view, um, of all appointments, the manager can see not only the appointments in in uh, the Dynamics 365, but can see the appointments in the other bookings. So first thing to show you is um, the uh, I, I'm using at the moment. I'm using um, Microsoft Bookings uh, just because I didn't want to show you any other booking system because you might get ideas and we, we want you to be on Microsoft. Um, but effectively, this information has, is actually stored outside of um, Dynamics 365 um, and uh, can be integrated. Um, and I'm showing you a way of actually doing that through um, a connector. But ultimately, we've got this um, demo bookings area where somebody can log on and um, uh, sorry, someone can access this site and ask for a, um, a, a an RSO consolidation meeting. Um, so if you click on this, what it does is there are um, only me at the moment. But there are our, our, our staff and availability times for making bookings. So what they would usually do was select the right times, fill out the information and book. Now, what we need to do is be able to have a trigger to be able to understand when somebody is creating a booking uh, and, and how that sort of relates into, into Dynamics. So the first thing to show you is uh, Power Automate. Now within Power Automate, I've got um, a thing up here called External Booking System Sync. So this will show you um, the type of things that you can do in Power Automate. So this is a flow, and if I go and edit this flow, there's a, a whole number of steps that you do, um, but I will very, very quickly go over this. There's a lot of, of stuff in here, but I'll just quite briefly go over it. So this is this trigger point at the moment. When an event is added or updated or deleted um, in this booking system, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my external booking calendar, which I've created a custom entity within Dynamics to be able to um, merge both appointments from Dynamics 365 and from uh, from this booking uh, engine. Um, I'm going to initiate some variables and actually step through and get the booking. So I'm going to get the booking that's been created. I'm going to retrieve some start and end times. I'm setting customer names. I'm setting customer emails. I'm searching for a user in, in Microsoft Graph. So I can go and find uh, the user that's related to that booking um, and also go ahead and find um, the uh, the contact as well so if i'm going and and uh, and if this is a new appointment if it wasn't a new appointment um and say for example if somebody wants to amend appointment on the booking entity we can build that journey in here and actually um, amend or update an existing appointment if that appointment's changing so again if you're talking about you know a fully fledged example uh, and a, a, a demonstration of this we would create them and we would also update them um and and, and you have another element for, for for deletions as well and removing that from the calendar i'm going to step through the utopian journey where we don't actually have an appointment so be creating appointment and then we would be searching for a contact. And if that contact exists in the system, then we would um, apply uh, an update 
um, an appointment to an existing contact. If it was a new contact, we would create a new contact in, in, in the uh, in flow and then update the appointment with a new contact. So as you can see, power, the, the, the power of Power Automate, that there's a lot of things that you can do and there's a lot of elements that you can that can build up to this. But ultimately, this is giving you an example of how things can can run through um, when you're actually um, when, when you're when you're integrating with some legacy systems. So if I um, click on test, um, I'm just going to uh, have this run in the background and what you'll see is that um, to see this work, I need to update or delete a calendar item. So what I'm going to go and do is jump on to that booking side and I'm going to go ahead and book an RSO consultant um, uh, consultation for Jordan. So and I'm going to have him as Jay Leonard. And I'm going to add phone number and then some optional addresses. So what I'm doing here is I've selected my time. I've selected Friday at 1600 and it's um, Jordan. So I'm going to go ahead and book. Now what you'll see on the Power Automate side is that that's now triggered the process if the demo gods are being nice. And it's gone ahead and identified that there is um, an event that's happening and it's stepping through my conditions. And it's stepping through, yes, it's a new booking and yes, we're finding the right people and yes, um, we're, we're, we're getting there and we're slowly but surely we're populating all this information. Now, how does that look from the Dynamics 365 side? Well, um, if I go ahead and uh, jump on to my demo calendar. And um, I haven't refreshed the screen yet, but as you can see on the 21st, um, we don't have anything uh, coming in here. If I was just to move away from this calendar and go back, what you will see is um, that. Uh, ah, Jordan, Jordan's come through um, and as a, an RSO consultant. So I've gone ahead and actually selected the right time. Although that sounds like it's the wrong time, but ultimately um, effectively you can then all, all of these other meetings are from other areas. There's a, uh, a gas inspection, there's a community call and that are they are standard appointments um, that are in the system and not specifically on the, the, the legacy booking engine, but as a, um, um, an officer, I can actually see all of the information, and all of the appointments that are happening um, on that day um, that relate to those. So again, Power Automate allows you to combine information together um, and then surface that through through the uh, th through the Power App, um, through the model driven app on a calendar view. Um, but effectively, you're, you're you're syncing two together. So the second, really, the second. Um, uh, example is is that com combination element. So the final, uh, the one that I do want to show you today, um, if I can quickly go through it, is RPA. So RPA is um, the, the the most uh, sort of the latest uh, element that we that, that is from the Power Platform. It's specifically designed um, to, uh, to, to to bridge the gap between legacy systems that may not have these APIs to be able to create these custom connectors and have this you know um, super streamlined data. It may be really legacy systems or web applications that don't have that you know that modern look and feel and functionality. So the the final scenario is that Crimson have rolled out tenancy enforcement. And uh, the enforcement managers uh, keep missing tar target dates for arrears progressions and submitting P call submissions. So possession claim online submission. So what we we need to do is that a key target is to keep the commitments um, uh, given in the announcement that the the the, the resumption of um, repossession cases are happening. So we need to make sure that we can very quickly at the right time go ahead and submit the right information to um, the possessions claims online website um, and actually do that uh, through RPA. So um, the reason why I'm choosing RPA for this is I don't know if anybody has experience with integrating with um, sort of 
uh, national government websites is that usually they are um, a, a number of decades behind um, wh where they that they could be, uh, and usually um, some of these areas um, that there, there are no APIs. So we're looking at old types of websites um, that that don't have that API capability, and how can we bridge that gap to actually send information and consume information from those websites automatically rather than having somebody uh, click through that. So I'm going to very quickly take you through. Um, robotic pro process automation from a desktop flow um, and then um, put that all together uh, and show you that being being run through uh, on real time. RPA, there's a lot to RPA. Um, I am really just talk, going through uh, the, the, the web automation side, but as you can see from, um, from, from Power Automate Desktop, there is a, a so many different uh, elements that you can use. I'm just going to use the example of um, uh, of this RPA um, for now. So first thing to do is uh, look at the possessions claims online uh, PCOL. So what I'm going to do is actually I've uh, recorded what's known as uh, a desktop flow. And if I edit this, this will show you. Um, a, a pre-recorded um, sort of step through submitting information into the possessions claims online. Now this, um, I think uh, I was talking to Kira uh, earlier this week around around this demonstration and what we were going trying to do was actually get this to uh, to, to do core reporting because everybody um, again uh, has um, uh, an obligation to uh, consume all of their um, their tenancy changes and their new tenancies into the core system. It's very, very similar to um, what I'm going to be showing here in, in PCOL. It's again a legacy website that doesn't really have API integration. It has bulk updates, which you can you can do bulk updates into um, into Excel or the other alternative would be using this type of RPA. So I'm going to step through this. Um, and just run you through um, how we actually can um, step through a journey. So if I just do um, uh, run, what it will do is it will actually launch for me a, uh, a window, a browser, which as you can see jumps up to possession claims online. And what the Power Automate will do is um, we'll, we've recorded pre-recorded steps that actually logs us in. And goes ahead and starts a submission. Now that's absolutely fantastic. As you can see, I've done this a few times. Um, you can actually go ahead and create uh, a new submission and start running through this. Now, that's brilliant from uh, understanding you guys understanding how it works. What I'd like to show you is how we use Power Automate um, to actually execute this um, really without us having to, uh, to, to to look and step through it manually. But what I'd like to show you first is how we have input variables. So for example, the case number, I actually have what's known as an input variable, which can be used and called within flow uh, and then manipulated. So if you think address line one, two, case number and postcode is the example that I'm going to use to actually run this through um, within Power Automate um, on, on, um, on the Dataverse um, and actually show you that in real time. So that's the desktop side. I've made the recording. I've gone ahead and, uh, and, and pre-done that. What I'd like to show you then is how that looks um, from a uh, from a Power Automate perspective um, within flows. So I've got a manual trigger, so I'm just manually triggering this. But if you can imagine, same principle as, say, for example, the booking side. If we were to create something, um, and uh, maybe it would be an update to a tenancy enforcement case where we've gone through certain stages, and now we're looking for PCOL submission, um, this would actually execute at that right time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this just manually and step it through. But this can be um, can be executed without um, without the witness, but I'm just going to run this so that you guys can see this and what it should do is it will pop up 
with a window and allow us to run this through. OK, so the window's popped up, so I'm not doing anything now. This is all uh, the system. It's going ahead, creating a reference. It's populating um, the information that needs to be used, social landlord. It's populating the addresses. It's going through and actually completing the possessions claim online process for you. So if you think about all of this data would be in your system um, and you'd be able to consume this robotic process automation to be able to then just go ahead and execute this process without having to do all of the submission submission. The really useful thing is um, if I was to submit this all the way through, I, obviously I won't because I'm not uh, going to be claiming possession. Um, but if I was to go all the way through this and as you can see that the, it stopped at this point, so I don't really go any further. But if we were to go through this, um, we would get a um, um, you know an ID back. We get some information back potentially um, when the uh, a, 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 a sort of a court date or whatever that may be. We can consume that information and then push that back into uh, Databurst in the same flow. And therefore, you're in your Dynamics application. You've gone from a tenancy enforcement. You've changed the status. You want to go submit P call. The system submits the P call and sends back to Dynamics the P call ID. And 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 the scheduled date for you know the court date and then additional processes can go. So in terms of being able to automate, um, it's not about these new you know APIs and it's and the, the the just using the custom connectors. You can do uh, robotic process automation with legacy websites as well. Um, so really, those those three are the, the the examples I wanted to run through today. Um, I've gone slightly over where I wanted to go to. Um, so obviously we want to have some sort of time for for conversations. Um, but yeah, that that's really sort of where I uh, where I end the demonstrations now. Um, so I'll just skip over these and um, and yeah, that that's that's pretty much it. So, um, Jordan, I don't know whether if we uh, if you've got anything sort of just a final element to add. Yeah, there's uh, just on my sort of final slides. All there's um, just I suppose a quick shout out to to everyone here. You know, if you're interested in learning a bit more, so some fantastic, fantastic examples there of different ways in which you can create integration with the Microsoft technology to be able to create that single view of the customer. Um, there's obviously a lot more that goes in. Um, to the thought processing of when you're when you're doing that as well, um, which you know isn't necessarily just technology driven. It can be anything from understanding um, how potentially you might create a working group, um, a center of excellence, and manage also the people and process side of that change that might go with creating that. So um, we've got various different workshops that we're able to offer. Um, a single view of the custom workshop is one. Um, they are complementary, so. Um, if you are interested in learning more about any of the technologies that Ollie showed or, you know, doing that first initial viewpoint to, to walk you through how you might go about creating that single view, um, then, then please reach out to us. Um, the, the final bit for me, just before I open it from Q&A, um, there's a link on the slide here. Uh, if you see down at the bottom, um, it's our Crimson Housing, um, our Crimson Housing LinkedIn page where we share more in details of the these these types of events and uh, also sort of blogs and information so um, at the end of this um, at the end of this session if you go and follow that link and just um, follow our LinkedIn page we're doing a, a, a 20 pound voucher draw uh, Amazon voucher draw um, for people that are followed off the back of this session um, so with that um, thanks Ollie, for a, a great demonstration we'll open it up um, we'll open it up to uh, the, the floor for questions um, and if it's OK, Ollie, I'll start. Um, you know, some great integration methods and styles there and different tools that we can use. Um, have you got um, sort of a viewpoint for the audience of um, deciding what types of integration to use for um, what types of scenarios? Is there a preference to use RPA for certain types of things? And just break that down for me, really. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a really good question, Jordan. I think um, when when it you know 
because the power of, um, of of this platform is is so great, and there's so many different types of options, um, it is really useful to to, to come up with scenarios in, in which you'd, you'd want to choose those. So it, RPA is a really good example of um, it, it's really purely the the, the legacy side of, in, uh, of of this integration where. It may be that um, you know the decision has been made that there is a, a um, an application, uh, a web, uh, a website, uh, or whatever it may be, it might not be in, under your control, but it, that we know that there's a lot of time taken for manual processing, manual uh, elements that have to be done time and time again. But it is very, very similar. Now, this is th this is the absolute sweet spot for RPA because, um, as you can see, you can very, very quickly build up that repeatable element in 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 RPA. Um, and as long as the data um, goes correctly um, with what you're trying to do, you can absolutely uh, you know you need to take all of that time back for for somebody to go and go and do some other things. When it's around um, sort of more uh, the integration for sort of data and analytics, um, I think you, you then start looking at um, the. Uh, the, still in Power Automate, but looking at um, uh, the, the Power Automate custom connectors um, or logic apps, which we, we didn't really touch on, but it's very similar to Power Automate, where you could actually um, sort of integrate in real time um, to to to, to uh, uh, systems where you can sort of pull that information together. Um, so, and and again, if it's purely just analytics, don't forget the things that I haven't showed you here, like Power BI. Power BI is a massively, massively important tool when it comes to combining different data sources to show information. Now, really, it, it, it's, it is very much a, um, an analytical tool and, and it can surface information, visualize information, but, but it, it's quite uh, difficult to then do stuff with it. So if you're wanting to do something with that data, um, you, know, you, you are looking at trying to get that real-time integration uh, into the, the platform. Uh, and then the virtual entities, I think that's going to come on leaps and bounds now that we've got the CRUD availability. Um, but again, from a uh, fr from an element of trying to keep your data as clean as possible and making sure that you're not duplicating data in different data sources. Well, virtual entities is brilliant for that because you can keep the data in its own data source uh, and surface that through dynamics um, and then it can be related to your your data in the right way. So, so, so there is just so many choices. Thanks, Ollie. And, and I know we've spoke uh, just as just another quick question for me for the audience. I know we've spoke a lot about the Microsoft technology this morning, um, but a few housing associations that both you and I have worked with have talked about. Well, what does good look like if we need to keep some of our legacy systems at the moment, or some of our existing housing management system? Can we do that? Um, and is that still, you know, a hybrid environment still an acceptable way and a step forward? So just your views on that. Yeah, again, good question. Yeah, to totally is. I, I really, I really think that, um, you know, we, you know, people going for the utopian view of, right, we're going to do absolutely every single business process, every single uh, element on one platform um, is, is, is a bit of a, it's a bit of a unicorn that, that never really happens. And hey, look, it'd be wonderful if it, w it was all on one system. But you know, th there are scenarios uh, which you know you do still want the best of breed um, uh, business functions, uh, and you want to be combining um, the right tools and technologies to, for your business. So um, hybrid approach is absolutely um, it, it's it's key in that. And again, from a uh, tool and technology standpoint, if you have the power platform as the sticky glue. That allows you to um, connect and communicate with all of these these data sources and still build that single picture for uh, people that are are in your platform. Then that's the best way, so that you you know you've got best of both. To to a user, yeah, it's all in one system, right? Behind the scenes, well, no, maybe not. That you know, the the it can be connected through different ways. Thanks, Ol. So, uh, any final questions just before we close? Feel free to pop your hand up or drop us a chat message. I know some of you have got busy morning, so um, but just a, again a thank you from all of uh, all of the Crimson team here uh, for joining. Um, and like I say, if you could pop us a follow on the uh, the LinkedIn link below, um, we'll be doing a draw for the the voucher later. Perfect. Okay, no problem. I think that's it. So thanks, Ollie. Um,
loads of food for thought there um so fantastic um we'll uh, we'll see you guys again hopefully um in about eight weeks time for the next session which um i believe is going to be teed up and talk about about digital engagement and multi-channel engagement and how to manage uh, that through um to, to be able to you know cope with different demands and different types of channels um okay brilliant thanks uh, ollie and uh, yeah we'll uh, we'll see you all again Cheers, thank thanks. Bye-bye. Really good, thank you.